Welcome, this is Tyler Disney, and we are going to be making a simple family today. This is part one of a family making tutorial. Um, we're just going to be covering basic geometry and uh, setting up a 3D parametric object. Um, in parts two and however many else there will be, we will get to the uh, more interesting information stuff. But for now, we're just going to focus on the geometry aspects of it. So, um, we're going to be making a VAV box today. I thought it was um, sort of an interesting thing to make. So, a VAV box, basically, uh, this is the inlet for a duct, comes in, there's a controller, a valve, uh, and then we're going to do a VAV box with a reheat coil on it. So we're going to have some hot water pipe connections coming out the side of it. Um, and then I, uh, this isn't going to be part of the family, so the, fa the family's going to go from here to here. Here's another image of one in action. You can see the inlet duct. Um, there's sort of a box on the side which holds the controller and the brains and the motors and things like that for the valve. And then here's the reheat coil. So, let's hop into it. Uh, open up Revit 2013. Uh, start a new family. Um, nope, not that. Ah. So I should open a family. Uh, new. And we're going to start from the generic model uh, family type. Nope, we're going to start from the mechanical equipment family type. Generic models if you're trying to do something else. So start from the mechanical equipment. window properly. Alright. So, um, this is what we're starting with. Um, uh, just take a second to familiarize yourself with everything. You, sh you come out starting with a reference level, which is just a, f a plan view. Um, elevation, front and left, and then a 3D view, which obviously there's nothing there right now. Um, so first things first, you might be tempted to come in here and just start uh, extruding away. Um, that would be wrong. Don't do that. Um, the very first thing to do when creating a family is actually not using a computer. The very first thing to do is to sketch it. Um, you want to sketch it to sort of uh, plan out how you're going to make it, what uh, principal 3D shapes you're going to use to create the family, and get an idea before you start modeling. That will avoid mistakes. Um, so do that first, um, but it will be hard for you to do it now because if this is your first time making a family, you won't really know how to sketch it. So we'll go through this first, and then you'll have an idea of how to do that. After you've sketched it, the very first thing to do is to create your reference planes. Families are built on reference planes, um, uh, not extrusions. So open up the uh, the reference plane, the floor plan view, and let's start making reference planes. So go to create uh, reference plane. We can also use the shortcut RP, which is what I'm going to be using from here on out. And then just start drawing reference planes. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the reference planes that define the box. Um, so I've got those for the main box. And then remember we had, uh, there's sort of a controller box to the side. And I'm deciding now that the controller box it's going to be on this side of the unit, and um, I guess so are the pipes. We'll put the pipes over here too. So, okay, so this is going to be the box, and let's make another reference plane for the heating coil. So, main box, heating coil. We'll also make another reference plane for the end of the round duct out here. Uh, we'll make another reference plane that's going to define the side of the controller box. And then we're going to need two more to define the ends of the controller box, because they will be different than the main box. If you're confused yet, don't worry, this will make sense in a little bit. Um, and then we're going to need a plane that defines the hot water pipe connections. So we're going to draw that right about there. 
Right now, I've got a mess of reference planes. Uh, very first thing to do is to name them. So, I'm uh, so these two that we started with, they're already named. You can't or don't want to rename them. Leave them alone. But all the ones that you created, uh, name them. And the um, uh, the cut the the primary directions, I guess, are left, right, front, back. So we're going to use that naming convention when we name our planes. So I'm going to name this one uh, main box left. Name that one main box right. This one's going to be reheat coil right. Main box front. Main box back. Uh, this one will be inlet left. Um, controller left. Controller right. And this will be controller back. Okay, so we've got them all named. Um, now that we have, uh, so we have all our plan reference planes, and we are going to need some reference planes um, in the vertical direction to define heights and elevations of things, but we'll do that um, in a second. First, we need to get these reference planes situated and dimensioned. So, um, an important thing is to make sure that uh, your family is going to be, has some relation to the origin of the family, and the origin is defined by the intersection of these two primary lines, center, front, back, center, left, right. So, what we'd like to do is we'd like to make the main box symmetrical around the origin. Um, so, to do that, we go to the um, dimension tool, which is around here somewhere. I always use the um, yeah aligned aligned dimension, and the keyboard shortcut is DI, which I'll be using from now on. Um, but to set symmetry, we're going to set symmetry. We're going to set this plane and this plane symmetrical around the center front back axis. So to do that, we click on all three of the axis lines drag out and click and then you see this little tag here that says EQ with the slash to it through it click it and that sets them equidistant around that we're going to do the same thing for these guys all right and those are the only um, lines that we need to be symmetric um, now that we've got those set we can actually start making dimensions so I'm going to set the width of the box by clicking just these two lines and clicking out. And now I've set this, but it's just sort of floating. It's, it's not smart or anything like that. To make it a parameter, you need to go up here to label none and then say add parameter. And I said this was the width, so I'm going to say box width. I want it to be a type parameter. I don't want to be able to change that between instances. And um, it is a dimension, so everything else here is good. Uh, do the same thing for the length. Call it box length. Then I'm going to set the coil width. Um, I believe you can't have any spaces in your names, by the way. Um, another thing you'll notice I did is I didn't really pay too much attention to the actual dimensions, because we're going to be setting those in a second, um, and it's not worth anyone's time to sort of try to draw them in the right places. I just want to draw them, you know, in this sort of scaled relationship to each other so you know what's going on. Um, but other than that, that's fine. Uh, so this is going to be the duct. In that duct length, so we're going to call it duct length. Um, and then we're going to have the controller 
length. It's the length dimension, controller length. Oh, oh, that's really the controller width. Uh, controller width. This is a controller uh, length. That's what we want. Um, and now you, you'll you'll notice something I've done here. Um, the controller width is related to this line, which is which has a relationship to the origin. But these two lines, which just have one dimension, they they don't have any relation to the origin, so it's sort of free-floating. So we need some other um, some other dimension, um, some other relationship between uh, the origin and these two lines. So um, I'm not really sure how what the standard is for VAB boxes. I feel like I've seen them t uh, in a number of different ones. Um, and have different relationships. But what I'm going to do, just because I can, and this is going to be sort of a generic VAV box, I'm going to set uh, the front of it to uh, to pretty much even with this. I might offset it an inch or two. So I'm going to give that a dimension. And I'm going to call it controller offset. Um, yeah, and that'll be fine. Um, and um, so the very last reference plan that I have here in plan is the plan that will locate the position in this direction of the hot water pipe connections. Um, I don't actually care to give that a dimension. I don't care what the dimension is. I would just like it to be in the middle of the reheat coil section. So I'm going to use uh, that uh, EQ tool again. So I'm going to hit DI for dimension. Click all three of these guys and hit EQ. And so however wide this is, this line is just going to be in the middle of them, which uh, is perfectly fine for my uses. Hmm. Okay, uh, so we've got that sort of settled, and now let's go into a front elevation, this guy, to set uh, the vertical dimensions. Now we've got, uh, we have a couple of options, however we want to think about it. Um, we could set things symmetric around here, so the bottom of the box is somewhere down here, and the top of the box is somewhere up here. Um, what that means is when you set the offset of the family in a project, that offset is going to be the middle of the box. And I prefer thinking about sort of bottom of equipment when I'm setting something and I say it's going to be 10 foot. I kind of assume that that means there's 10 foot of clearance below that. I mean, I don't generally assume that, you know, you have to check things, but that's sort of the my intuitive way of thinking about it. So I'm going to build my family that way. So I'm going to make it another reference plane, RP. And I'm going to define a line that will be the top, the top of the box, and then another line that's going to be the center line of the box, and that'll be useful for defining um, the duct connections. And then the only other two reference planes that I think we need are going to be the reference planes that define uh, where the hot water pipe connections are. And they're going to be about here and about here. So I'm going to draw that guy. I'm going to draw that guy. Um, and I'm going to name this uh, pipe connection pop. This one will be pipe connection bottom. This one is going to be top plane. And this one is going to be a box center line. Now uh, you might wonder why I'm naming my planes. Um, it's a good habit to name all of your reference planes for two reasons. One, it's just helpful to remember what you're doing. Like, you know, there's 
a number of reference planes now and this is a fairly simple family you can just start getting a lot of uh, reference planes in family so it's a good habit to be in just for your own sanity's sake um, but another reason is that um, oftentimes when you make extrusions um, you have to tell Revit which plane you want to be drawing off of what the reference level for that is um, and you can't do that unless your plane is named so um, it's this button over here by the way set that sets the work plane for you to draw off of and this list right here is only populated by named reference planes if I haven't named it it's not even gonna say you know default one or one two three four or anything like that it just um, it won't be there so always name your reference planes and try to give them names that uh, make intuitive sense to you um, okay dimensions di um, we're going to set the height of the box box height height and then the center line since I want it to be the true center line I'm just going to set it equal and now these two pipe connections um, if I was working off a cut sheet I would maybe look that up set them to whatever they are based on the cut sheet but again this is a generic family um, so I'm just gonna make it simple on myself I'm gonna set them equidistant symmetrical around the center line if Rev will let me do that interesting I might have over constrained it we will find out um, actually I think I did I think I over constrained it um, so I'm gonna undo that just hit control Z to undo that twice um, instead of doing that uh, which as I said I think I just over constrained it I'm going to set the distance from the center line no you know what I'm gonna set it equidistant if it over constrains it it'll be a good uh, lesson I guess um, take it back, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set this distance here and I'm going to say that this is the pipe connection offset. Um, I'm going to set I'm going to set the bottom one to the same one so I'm just going to select it from my list pipe connection offset um, okay so I have all of my reference planes relationships set right yes I think I'm good so uh, so oop. so here we have our reference level we have our front elevation um, and now what we need to do is we need to make these dimensions sort of make sense and, and clear some things up. So the place to do that is in the family types dialog. So I hit that button and we have all of the dimension parameters that we just created and all of the dimensions that um, were just sort of randomly set based on um, what I came up with. So um, I'm just going to sort of take some guesses at what a reasonable box size I think would be um, to get these sort of populated so I don't think it's going to be five foot tall um, I think this box is going to be 24 inches tall two feet I think the length of it is going to be three feet I think the width of it is going to be two foot <sighs> core width uh, let's give it three inches oops not three feet three inches controller length so let's see our box length is three feet um, you know what I'm gonna do instead of giving this a discrete length I'm going to tell the controller length to be a percentage of the box length um, because if I start changing the length in different types um, and keep the 
controller length the same. Um, it could start. It could all of a sudden be too big or too small or something like that. Um, so I'm I'm just trying to make it. Um, I just want to make it sort of a percentage of the box length, which you know isn't how you would build it if you were building it from a cut sheet. Again, generic family. I just want it to basically work. Um, if I need to set it to something precise, I will go back in and modify the family later. So I'm just going to tell it. So this is the formula column. I'm just going to tell it to be. Um, I'm going to say three quarters of the box length. So 0 0.75 times and just type in box length and hit enter um, and I think that is good to go um, in previous versions this would gray out but uh, it appears to be working so um, controller offset that was how far oh see that's nice it uh, sort of highlights the dimension um, in the view back here so I can tell what I'm doing um, so how far is it to the front of the box um, I, I just want that to be something small I wonder if it'll let me do zero yeah it does cool um, controller width uh, I'm gonna say it's four inches the controllers controller box is four inches deep uh, duct length four inches and the pipe connection offset this is another one I want to be relational. I want it to be, uh, um, because if, if I set it to, say, uh, I don't know, a foot, um, well, if I set it to a foot, it'd be at the top and bottom, because it's a two-foot tall box. Um, but say if I set it to one thing and then shrunk the height uh, and didn't go back and change this, then I would have my pipes sort of floating in midair. Um, so I don't want that for my generic box. So I'm going to set this pipe connection offset to be half of the box height divided by two. I probably could have just called it a quarter of that, but this is what makes sense to me. Okay, let's hit apply and see what happens. And you'll have to uh, adjust some of your reference planes uh, as everything sort of changed to uh, to fit the dimensions that we just entered in. I'm gonna tighten this up a bit. Terribly interesting tutorial. Not cool if I'm doing a game tutorial or something. The wrong industry, apparently. Okay. Um, Alright, that's fine. Let's check out the elevation. Where's my elevation? Front. Interesting. Uh, right, so this is my coil connection. This is a part where it uh, becomes handy that you named all your reference plans. And top of my box. Such a line. Alrighty. Looking good. Um, okay, so we have a reference plan set up, but um, we have one more thing to do before we can start drawing things, and that is to create more than one type. So as you're creating families, you always want to be um, testing it, because remember, we're not just making uh, one 3D virtual object. We're trying to create a parametric family, which means that you can tell it to be different sizes, and it will intelligently do that and not break, um, which is, I think, more of an art than a skill. Um, um, and so as you're building it, it's a good idea to be testing it. And uh, so um, we go back into the uh, family types window and let's we want to create a new type. 
Uh, currently we only have the one, so we'll say new family type, uh, call it type A. Yeah. Um, so now we have one type, uh, and let's have the second one be type B. Um, and type B is going to be a little bit bigger, so we're going to make it three foot, uh, four foot long. Gonna make it two and a half foot wide. Uh, they coil it. That's fine. Uh, that can stay the same controller length. That's the relational controller offset is also fine. Well, just to be clever, let's make that two inches because uh, it's good to test all of these things. Controller width. Uh, let's make it five inches. Uh, duct length, that's fine. Pipe connection offset is also relational. Okay. So, uh, we're just checking to see if obvious things are breaking. Um, and it doesn't appear that they are. Take this off to the side. Bay apply. Okay, no error messages or any obviously funny things going on, so we will keep that. Okay, we can start modeling things. Um, let's do the box first. This is actually the, typically the fastest part. So, um, by default, our set reference plane, or our set plane to be drawing off of, is going to be the reference plane, uh, which is what we want. So, let's go to create extrusion. Um, and so, uh, uh, this tab comes up and you can draw different things. So the shape we want to draw is a box. So we go up here, select rectangle, um, and make sure we're drawing on the right planes. So main box back, main box left, good, click once. This is main box front. Um, and I'm looking, oops, down here. When you mouse over plane, it'll tell you what the name is. So as I mouse over here, you can see it's saying reference plane, main box front in that lower left corner. Then likewise here, it's saying main box right. So the intersection is where I want to be. So I click and you see all these um, lock boxes. Check all those to uh, lock the extrusion. Um, and then, so we've got the sort of plan view um, laid out for that. Uh, but we also want to tell it how far up to extrude itself. S and you do that over here in the properties window. It's defaults to a foot. Um, so you just click on this really not obvious or intuitive button and then set it to the parameter that we created before box height and then just hit the check button and check that out in your 3D mode and there you go your awesome uh, box uh, alright so what else do we have that we can do in the reference plane I think all we have is the controller uh, so we're going to create another simple box for the controller, which is uh, main box left, control back. Oh, you know, that's interesting. Um, so because I made the offset between the uh, main box and the controller box, reference line zero, um, I can't, it doesn't look like I can click on the other one, on the um, controller reference plane. So I'm just going to change to type B when I have an offset. Um, ah, there we go. So that's the one I want. And I am going to create my box extrusion. Rectangle intersection. Lock it up and set the height to the box height. Cool. Uh, the dimensions and the relations on this look all goofy. Um, and by that I just mean I, I guessed funny on what the dimensions of an actual VAV box are. I uh, should probably be a lot less. Um, but anyways, that's the wonder of parametric families, is that you can go in and change those relationships later and create as many variances as you want. 
So I'm just going to leave it. I think it has character. Um, Alright, so... So we've got uh, the main box. We've got that guy. Controller. Um, the very next thing we have is the coil section. Uh, which is just another box of the same uh, sort of dimensions as this guy. So go back into extrusion mode. Try box. Lock it down. Give it the correct height. Finish. Alright, I have a coil. Uh, the very next thing we have to do. Um, or the only things remaining, rather, are the uh, hot water pipes and the duct inlet. So let's make the duct inlet first, because that's always fun. So um, I want to be... So this is on the left side, and so I'm going to need to set my work plane to the uh, to this reference plane, which is in main box left. So I'm going to open up the left elevation view. Now you can see I'm looking uh, um, the setup. I'm looking like my eyeballs right here, and I'm looking this way here. So um, I'm going to be drawing a circular duct here. So again, um, first thing we have to do is set the reference plane. So go to set work plane. And we're going to choose main box left. Click OK. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to do. I'm going to open up this guy because it'll show you. Uh, I'm going to go back to set. And you can see when you have the 3D view open, it'll show you. Um, it'll sort of sketch out which reference plane you're selecting. So you know, main box right is over there. Um, controller back is over there. Main box center line is right there, so it gives you some sort of visual feedback and assurance that you're picking the right one. So what do we say? Main box left. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to draw an extrusion, um, but this time it's going to be a circular shape that I draw. And I'm going to be careful and make sure that both the vertical and horizontal center lines of my family are highlighted. And then click and draw, and it doesn't matter uh, the size again because we're going to set it. Uh, I'm going to hit escape to get out of that tool, and then I'm going to go back into my dimension tool, which is DI. Um, and I can't really do anything to this because I'm in aligned mode, um, but I'm going to change it to radial. And then just click on the circle, and then click out once, hit escape a couple times, click on the dimension, and I'm going to add another parameter, and this one's going to be inlet duct radius. Select OK. And then the very last thing I need to do is tell it how far to extrude. And we made a parameter for that, which is in uh, uh, duct length. OK, we are done. Unfortunately for us, um, what Rivet did is it drew our duct in which means that that distance that we said, um, the, the sort of positive direction that it thinks for that reference plane is clearly to the right. We actually want it to go to the left. Um, and, and you can't just say negative this parameter that I've created. It doesn't allow you to do that. Um, this frustrated me for quite some time until I realized um, how Revit was thinking about it and how you can control it. So go back into the uh, reference plane, and um, if, if you've done much 3D modeling before, you might be familiar with the concept of uh, normals. So faces in planes in 3D geometry have normals, which is the um, direction that's orthogonal to the plane. Uh, orthogonal is another word for perpendicular. So the normal for this plane, the one that I sketched on, is to the right. Um, and that's why our extrusion uh, is popping into our duct instead of out of, uh, into the box instead of out of the box. Um, I was really frustrated for a long time because I didn't know how to change that. Um, but actually, all I have to do is 
flip it. So grab the top handle and click and drag and bring it down there and you have successfully flipped the normal to now be facing to the right. So um, yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, um, but that's a bit large. I want it to be smaller. So I'm going to go in and change inlet duct rad to be um, six inches. Uh, no, yep, radius six inches, so the diameter is 12 inches. My box is way too big. Uh, yeah, it's way too big. I have to change that. Okay, oh yeah, right. Now's a good time to change. Save it. Uh, let's see. Oops, probably not that one. Family generic VAB box reheat. I'm just going to tighten up these dimensions a bit. So the height is going to be, uh, let's go to type A. Height is going to be 18 inches. I think it's going to be 2 feet. But it's going to be 18 inches. Um, I'm going to make the controller width a bit bigger. So it's looking skinny. <laughs> right. Alright. That's looking more like a respectable VAV box. Okay, um, so we've got our duct inlet. Now we just need our uh, pipes. So um, we need to uh, be sketching on this plane, the main box backed plane. Um, so we don't have that open right now, but I'm going to open it. Go over here to the elevations, back. Um, Uh, I'll keep that guy open. Um, and so the, the, the pipes that I want to create are going to be here and here. So let's um, set our work plane to uh, main box back. Create, set, and main box back. Checks out. Um, and then I'm just going to create some extrusions, circular ones. Uh, that one, I uh, that one. Uh, hit escape a couple times. Go to the dimension tool, DI, radial. Um, and you might be wondering why I'm using uh, the radial dimension as opposed to the diameter dimension, because we typically th call out pipes in terms of diameter. Um, and uh, you will see very shortly. Um, just bear in mind that for now, the way the family creator works, it's easier to do that. Um, okay, so we have those. Now we just need to tell Revit how... Um, oh, I'm sorry. We need to give them a label, uh, a parameter. I'm going to call that pipe connection rad. Pipe connection rad. Okay, and we want them... Um, this is one where I'm not going to make a parameter for it because um, I, I feel like it's not all that important to be able to change that. And the fewer parameters I have sort of polluting my family, um, the easier it is to work with. So um, I'm just going to say that they're sticking out of the box about four inches um, and call it a day. Uh, all right, the green checkbox. Looking good. All right, uh, let's tighten those up a bit. Uh, pipe connection rad. Um, let's make them uh, three quarter inch diameter. So that's engineer. So I'm bad at math. 0.375. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna do that for type A and type B as well. What? <coughs> what? Can't make extrusion. Oh, I think I did something bad. Current parameter values. Okay, cancel that. 
What did I do? Uh, let's go back here. Oh, so the way to get back into an extrusion uh, is to click on the extrusion you made and hit Edit Extrusion, and you can get back in here. Um, huh. Pipe connection run. Um, okay. And go back here. Connection run. Zero point oh zero point zero dash point three seven five. So three eighths of an inch plot yeah, there we go. I, I think I was just telling it to be too big, something about I I was telling it to be that many feet instead. So okay. So type A do it for type B as well. Um zero dash zero point three seven five. Biff. That's the ugly one. Pepe. Okay. Um, yeah, that looks uh, that looks pretty nice. So the last thing we need to do is we need to create the pipe and duct connections. Now that's going to be sort of informational connections that you attach to 3D geometry. That um, when the family is in your project, you can select the family, and those tags will pop up, and you can right-click and say "draw duct" or "draw pipe," and there'll be some uh, some intelligence built into it. Uh, we're just gonna set them up. We're not gonna do anything real fancy with them. Like I said, that's for a later day. This is getting long-winded enough as it is. Um, but uh, this is a this is a fundamental thing you need to know how to do to make any family. So we've got a, a duct connection here here and then the pipe connections here. Let's do the ducts first. So go up here to create a duct connector and then um, just mouse over until you get the uh, the face you want and, and then click that guy. Um, that's rectangular but no big deal. Um, and the mouse over this guy and set that one. So um, this guy is um, well, it's rectangular, and we don't want that. So over here in the properties, just change it to round, and then um, its radius is clearly, you know, crazy. Um, and we want it to be the same as this guy. Uh, so the way to do that, if you see this little plus symbol right here, click that, and then you can set it to the um, parameter that you created, so that the duct connection remains intelligent. Um, and that is inlet duct rad and so this is why the parameter we created we told it to be the radius not the diameter because the connections the duct and pipe connections think in terms of radius as far as I've been able to tell I can't set them to diameter so um, it's just easier if you have one parameter for both of them instead of needing to create both a radius and a diameter parameter so um, yeah that's the story um, last thing to do is to set some of this information here. So um, set this to system, I believe, is what we want. I'll get into that more in the next tutorial. Flow direction, this is all pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, supplier, yeah, that's fine. Um, leave everything else as it is. Um, so we'll just go set this guy. And this one is rectangular, that's what we want. Um, and so we can just set the height to the box height and the width to the box width. Uh, change it to out. Supplier, rectangular, okay. Uh, and we can give it a description. Why not? Uh, box out. And this one can be box in. Box in. Um, okay, good to go. Um, the pipe connections are the exact same thing. Um, create pipe connector. Make sure you get the right guy selected. Set the radius. Um, we'll set the top one to be inlet. So it's coming in. Uh, Take a better look. Um, domestic? Nope, not domestic hot water. 
hydronic supply. Okay. Um, and it's uh, m more important to give this a uh, a descriptor. So we're going to call this hot water supply. This one is going to be out. Uh, hydronic return. I'm going to call this hot water return. Um, and we'll just say bottom because that's that actually becomes helpful when you're connecting these things so top. Okay. Um, man, we're done. That's it. You've created your very own sort of fully functional parametric BAV box family. Congratulations. Um, save it. Um, yeah, that's it. If you had your project open, you could hit load in a project and it would dump it in there and you could start playing with it. But I don't have one open, so this is the end of the tutorial. Thanks! Hope it was helpful.